this is Andy Tube. In this video, I'm going to start uh, cleaning the inside areas of this uh, Singer Featherweight machine. And uh, you know, I've been going through all my videos and showing you how to remove and replace the parts, and uh, decided to use oil on the outside at the end as kind of a cleaner polisher. And this time, I'm going to use uh, that same crud cutter. Uh, about 14-15% solution on the inside but I have to be sure and protect the finish outside since I found out that it kind of uh, you know dulls it and bothers it so I just have a, a kitchen trash bag plastic folded over the body to protect it in case I drip on it and I have poured some of the solution into a little cup here and I have uh, I have many uh, brushes and and rags and stuff to help me uh, I have my hair dryer because once I clean it I want to dry it so I don't get flash rust and uh, look the, uh, the the Singer standard sewing machine oil was uh, on sale at Joann's for three dollars and forty nine cents so I got some fresh oil I didn't spot it at first because it's purple see this red one tells you how long I've had this huh <laughs> but uh, I'll be I'll be after I clean it and dry it I brush on uh, a light coating of oil on the uh, steel parts and stuff like that because I don't want any uh, flash rust coming in there. I've tried to rig up my electric flashlight so that you can see a little bit in there but I think if you see in the beginning it's empty it's not too dirty in there you know I've certainly seen a lot worse but uh, what I'm going to do is just take a, an old sock and uh, put it on my hand as a cleaning rag like that hi Lala <laughs> and uh, dip it in the solution and go in and wipe around as much as I can and then I'll use some of those brushes to get into the the little holes and down through the needle bar bushings and stuff like that so now you could wear gloves under your sock or rag, you know, if you just get this good and good and wet here. Kind of restricted for room. Get that wet. And then I'm just going to go in and start wiping down. And with, with everything off, I can spin the counterweight, the needle bar counterweight there, all around and get it on all the sides and get into the side area over here and spin the counterweight and get up above and behind it. Mm -hmm. Come down on the other side. Now, I know uh, people use kerosene for this. And... Uh, I, uh, if you watched my channel very long, you know I prefer to use this uh, crud cutter, cleaner and degreaser. And I figured as long as I can, uh, as long as I can protect the f outside finish, that I'd be okay to use this. So well, there you can see some of the uh, gunk I'm getting off there, and like I said, it didn't look it didn't look too bad compared to a lot of uh, machines I've cleaned over the years. <laughs> now I could use I thought about using a stronger uh, solution than this on inside parts. I've used crud cutter full strength on those really nasty uh, blackened uh, slant needle gears 
you know, and worm gears and stuff like that. And I've used it at 50% and 25%, but I already had this batch of spray bottle mixed up at about 14%. So I figured looking at the interior here, it didn't look too bad and I would just use it. And I think I got everything wiped down pretty good. Let me take my cleaning sock off and you can see what came out of there even though it didn't look bad in there. And then I think I'll uh, I think I'll do this uh, bushing up there. And I gotta be careful up there because it can spill over Maybe I'll go in from the bottom. Yeah, that's a good idea. I was just going to jam the brush in from the top. So I'm just going to dip it a little bit in my brush and shake it off a little bit. And I'm going to go up in there. I'll put my finger up there so I don't come out too far. And uh, get that brush up in there. And in case there's any old uh, dried up oil in there. You know, we, we want to get that out. And then I think that same brush can fit into the hole over here. So I'll just get a little bit more on there and run it through. Can I get it in there too for the take up lever anchor screw? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see some black stuff coming out. That's a little too small. Let me grab a, a smaller brush here. I bought a set of about eight of these brushes on, uh, I don't know, eBay or Amazon. and It was only about five or six dollars, you know. And they're just twisted steel handles with a loop and then these nylon bristles. So they they work they work pretty good I think getting in all these little spots I'm going to come down through the lower needle bar bushing now for the same reason get any old mucky oil out of there mm -hmm. Let's try this one more time up here and then uh I have uh, just an old cotton, kind of like a bar towel or something, I guess. And I'm going to use it to wipe up any extra liquid. Mm -hmm. Get behind there. You see back behind that, uh, see that? That's from behind back behind that um, needle bar counterweight there that the take up lever and the needle bar connecting link system and everything connect into. There's just some old grunge back there and the oil can leak into there from the from the arm bushing up on top and uh, build up gunk back in there. So that's actually looking pretty good. I don't even know if I'm going to use, need to use my hair dryer. But uh, another thing that I can do is I make a couple of these uh, skinny t-shirt rag strips. Um, I'll clean the parts of the tension unit with these you know slip this soft cotton in between the disc and stuff with a little alcohol on it or crack cutter and kind of just give it a shoe shine mm -hmm. but I don't want any rust building up in these little holes or areas so I am just going to give it a quick blast with uh, a hair dryer. I usually do it just on warm and uh, in this case I'll use low air pressure.
Okay, you get the idea with that. I mean, Arizona, we're so hot and dry here, you know. But I know in a lot of places in the world, it's much more humid. So, uh, especially on these uh, iron or steel parts, you want to dry it right away. You know, you don't want um, to get any little flash rust on there. So I'm going to take my new bottle of sewing machine oil and I'm just going to get some in this little cup and I have a watercolor paintbrush a soft I use acrylic brush for grease and a water brush you know about like a package of 10 brushes for five bucks at Walmart or someplace and I want to get a little oil and I want to just brush it on the steel parts. Now if the body of this is cast aluminum, I don't need to, to paint oil all over that. Uh, you know, um, because aluminum doesn't really, doesn't really rust. But I will put a little bit into the uh, needle bar bushings. And of course later I'll oil them. And, and it's kind of a lot of oil when you brush it like this. It's kind of a little sloppy. And you don't want to leave extra oil on the machine because it's just going to collect dirt and lint and stuff. But when I wash and dry and, and oil the machine, I um, brush it on like this. Now, when I go to put the parts up in here, I'll take a, a cloth and I'll wipe out the excess oil or a, a cotton bud or Q-tip or, or whatever, you know, to, to wipe up any excess oil. But that is... Uh, my version of cleaning inside there. I've got the hand wheel off, but I can just rotate this with my fingers. Make sure I've got it covered with a, just a light, light coat of oil. Okay. So I think the next thing that I'm going to do is turn it around and just look at the end of the arm shaft and the uh, arm shaft counterbalance back there where the hand wheel goes and see what I want to clean back there. Okay, I do want to clean up the uh, the uh, counterbalance here that's screwed on to the end of the arm shaft and kind of inside here and I probably want to put a brush in through the hole for the um, hinge screw or bolt that holds the feed regulator. But this is where it's dangerous for you people with the pretty pristine machines, you know. To, you don't want this stuff running all over, I wouldn't imagine. <laughs> so first, I'm just going to get my cleaning sock back on and just dip it a little. Squeeze it out. So I try not to run it around. And I'm going to just... Kind of try and wipe down this counterbalance. Mm -hmm. Get in here and get that area. And I am going to wipe down in here, behind there, because that's behind the mm, hand wheel. Now, that's looking pretty good. Let's see if I can, how am I, if it runs down the inside of the machine, I'm not worried about that, if the liquid does. And I have, I have a towel and, uh, with plastic under it, towel to absorb any extra liquid and a plastic to protect my work surface, you know, and, uh, yep. Just goes in a little bit, so I'm just going to 
get a little bit of the cleaner on there and maybe I'll twist it around in there I don't have a real tight fitting brush because I don't want to squeeze the cleaner out and have it running all over the place down here mm -hmm. okay and then I'm going to use it to get behind the collar of that uh, counterbalance so I couldn't quite get my finger back in there all the way to, to clean that I'll take my take my towel and wipe up wipe off as much of that stuff as I can you know one thing I always I always talk about the grease and grime and stuff like that on the machines but um, something I don't mention too often and probably should is that uh, old vintage machines can have some pretty sm some pretty strong smells to them sometimes depending on what kind of grease was on there and if the owner was a, a smoker you know and you and you and you smell cigarette smoke or cigar smoke or something on the machine especially when the motor warms up and starts running because a lot of the motors have a little fan in there you know and uh, that, that pulls in cool outside air like and blows it over uh, parts of the motor and I've noticed um, on the slant needle that I figure you know sometimes boy somebody had an ashtray sitting right next to the upright on the right hand side of this you know 401 and that little the fan in the motor sucked that smoke right into the bottom of the machine and blew it up over the motor and out on the pinion gear at the top and into the into the top of the machine I was like wow man and you can see kind of yellowy tarish grime and when you when you smell that so crud cutter does remove any any uh, you know smoke smells uh, pet pet smells mm, cooking smells if somebody had their machine set up in an area of their kitchen you know and you you can smell stuff like that sometimes mm -hmm. so it's very good at eliminating smells also I'm back to putting a little oil since the arm shaft and this counterbalance is uh, steel I'm going to put a real light coat of oil around there and back behind that collar and on the counterbalance itself okay so you see that's pretty easy right and uh, didn't do any damage to the finish so I think I'm going to go to the top now and uh, I'll have to set up my well I wonder if I could just turn this thing like this hmm think maybe I can let me just prop this up like that what do you think of that mm -hmm. I can see my gears in there my forked feed connector the arm shaft the grungy inside area and any liquid will go down the upright and through the machine without harming the finish so I'm going to try that and I think I'm first going to start with a little bit of 
the cleaner and get it around that steel gear and the gear on the top of the upright down there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can just turn this gear by hand because I don't have all the other parts attached to it. You can just get a little bit of that. You could use a little brush to do this too. I've used the brush a lot of times. And I'm going to get in on the sides where I see a lot of stuff in here. Grease that's been thrown off the gears uh, onto the side of the body. And what looks like maybe crumbling pieces of lead or flakes of lead. Uh, something in there like little flakes of something mm -hmm. these uh, gears were not too bad at all so they already are looking pretty good just rotate them here and scrub them now I've also used um, a toothbrush you know when they're when they're just slightly greasy and dirty like these ones in La La here just to try and get in those teeth where where you know the teeth meshing like this the bottom of the V so to speak gets impacted with a lot of uh, the the dried stuff and the grease and the dirt and things like that so I like to uh, brush brush those and uh, whoops my my prop up bars falling over and I even have uh, you know I buy these little two for a dollar metal uh, wire brushes and they're just called detail brushes and when Depending on the gear, I've dipped these in a and a hundred percent solution of crud cutter and had to scrub and scrub and scrub some of those slantomatics I've done. You know where people have just put all kinds of oil and lubricant, never cleaning off the old, just squirt some more some more grease on top of the old and <laughs> and uh, then somebody decides to use the uh, what's that black powder? I can't I can't remember the name of that now but they throw that some into the grease and oh my gosh man it's the stuff that's in the lead pencils I can't I can't remember the name of it right now sorry so looking at the base of the gear where the set screws are you know, I'm just wiping that. It, it's coming off very easy now after brushing a little bit of that crud cutter. And that's working to soften and loosen up uh, the old grease and stuff in there. And that's working uh, well. And then let's see if I can get my old bar towel in here and wipe it up go into the side areas here and I've got that whole forked uh, feed fork connection see what's coming off the inside there uh-huh and uh, I started to say I have that whole fork feed connection and the uh, what is that shaft the feed rock lifting shaft I think it's called mm -hmm. now sometimes 
if you get this cleaner down into the bushings, you know, you'll get to where uh, the machine get, doesn't turn easily because you're, you're washing out all the old grease and oil and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I think I got quite a bit out of there. Mm -hmm. I still see right along the side of that gear is um, some pretty good dried up globs of the old lubricant that have been thrown off the gear over the year over the years and they stick right to the side of the machine there and it's kind of got layer after layers and it's it's black and dirty but when the when the light shines on it just right you can see wow look at all that so just do that again I think mm-hmm it's looking pretty good, isn't it? Now you can get uh, you can get um, flash rust on these gears when when you use a cleaner like this that strips all the grease off. You know it's got chemicals. You can get a flash rust. But the thing is, that you never put oil on a gear. You only put grease on gears, right? So. Uh, you want to go ahead and dry it and get some oil on the other steel parts but first I always put grease on the gear because if you get oil on those teeth then the grease won't stick to it <laughs> if, when you try and when you try and uh, you know put grease on the gear when you've spilt oil on that gear I mean, you can brush the grease on forever, and it just kind of slides off. And the first time you run the machine, whew, it'll just fly out of everywhere. So, I think you can see what I'm doing in there. I'm going to dry it a little bit, and I'm going to grab my tri-flow grease. And we're going to get a little, just a little light coating on these, on the gear, right? so we don't have to worry about rush uh, rust as we're working on the rest of the machine okay before i get started putting grease on this gear you know you remember there's a, a matching gear down below on the upright shaft and see if i can get my flashlight in there can you can you see that that gear bevel gear mates with the vertical gear on the horizontal shaft and so I did go in and dip my cleaner brush and and go in I, I put my rag like hanging in here to protect it and went in and cleaned this up and dried it so that I wouldn't uh, forget that okay so when I go to put this uh, grease on now, see if I can get my machine set up here in any good way to show you. Now usually you can just put the grease on one gear and it will transfer to the other. Or you can brush a light coating on both if you like. Okay, and I mentioned that I use a, a little an acrylic brush for this because it's stiffer and it takes the grease better. And that's the grease, uh, clear syn synthetic grease. I like it because it has that uh, PTFE so. Uh, to me, it's kind of like putting a Teflon <laughs> coating on the gear. And I'm just going to get a little bit of that grease on there. And I will 
Hmm. Brush it on the teeth of those gears. And uh, I'll do this later too. Uh, but I want to get a, a, just a real light coating of that grease on there to prevent any rust while I'm working on the machine. And this is what I mean about doing the gear first because if you do the oil or get oil on there it will not accept grease later. And you don't use oil on gears just because it's too thin and it can't hold up and it, and it, it can't take the heat. These gears get hot, believe me. I mean, blister your finger hot. So, see if I can get... Can you, can you, yeah. I don't know how am I going to, oops. Can't set it like that. Can you see the gear now? So just from turning, it's transferring grease from the top, you know, onto my clean lower gear. But if, if sometimes I do just, just the same, same thing, you just go in here and gently, you know, if, if you get grease on the shafts or something like that, you want to wipe it up with a, your finger or uh, something because it's just going to collect dirt and get yucky there and we just cleaned all that kind of stuff out of there right so that's enough grease on there for now to prevent rust yeah, hey okay so I'm gonna cap off my grease here and I'm going to get my little oil cup and softer oil uh, brush and I prop this up somehow and I'm going to go in and I'm going to put a light coating of oil on these other parts not the gear hmm <laughs> right not the gear so and, and just just the light coating uh, you know, when you're oiling your machine for maintenance, you don't put oil on these parts unless you're going to be storing the machine for a long time. Then you should put a light coating on all the steel. But you would oil in the normal oil points, uh, which you'll see me do here in a minute or so. But because I've stripped all the old oil out of this machine area by using the crut cutter I just want to get a little uh, light coating of oil on the arm shaft and the fork feed and the the feed rock lifting thing shaft thing sorry shaft and then I am going to put a little bit of oil in the uh, three points here that you would you would see in the oiling directions which would be at the top of this cap there's an oil port right right there mm hmm and on this um, eccentric that that the the forked feed connector goes on right right there I need a third hand don't I yeah see that silver oblong eccentric and then this is the port for the bushing right there so I'm just gonna put a couple drops on all that in case any of my cleaner got in there and you know it's a water-based cleaner right so I don't want that uh, causing any rust so just a couple drops in that and on the eccentric and 
I'll put my tube in the port. Whoops. I'll put my tube down in the porthole and just put a couple of drops down there on the bushing for the arm shaft. Whee! Oh boy. Mm -hmm. I think that bushing was a little dry. So now we're now we're talking, huh? Get my light up here, maybe. You can see this a little better here. Mm -hmm. There we go. See, that's not a lot of uh, grease on there yet, but it's enough to protect it. And brushing oil on not the teeth of the gear, but you know, on the base is okay once after you clean on the collar here and then your normal oiling three ports here mm -hmm. okay all right so what's going to be left here then is the bottom the whole bottom portion of this machine I've got my other set of bevel gears. I have my hook drive shaft and I have the feed lifting and feed rock shafts. And I've got, you know, stuff down here to clean. So I'm probably going to do the same thing here, except I might use a paintbrush to brush on a light coat of that stuff and let it start working. And I got some pretty grungy areas here. But we'll see. Let me set up and we'll get started. Okay, just one word here before I get started on the uh, bottom of Lala here. I mentioned a few times about flash rust. And if I, uh, this is the rust remover I use. It's called the Must for Rust. It's made by Crud Cutter. Same company that, that makes the cleaner. And uh, those are both made by Rust-Oleum. And I was looking for a rust remover when I started the first time I encountered this uh, must for rust. I mean the flash rust, sorry, the flash rust. And I just went down to the uh, Home Depot, I think it was, and I saw this on the shelf. I said, oh, it's made by crud cutter. Okay, I'll try it. And I'm very happy with it. And uh, I, I never looked for anything else. And I've never used anything else. It's about five or six dollars for an eight ounce bottle. It's uh, clear. It has a little bit of a pungent odor, but if but when I get flash rust on any of this steel after washing and dry it, drying it, I'll just uh, get a little bit on a brush and brush it on, and the rust is gone. So. In case you're looking for a rust remover, I can recommend that. If you have one that you like, that's great. So with this uh, now on the bottom, I'm going to kind of do the same procedure. I'm tilting it back so that any running liquid, liquid will, will stay, you know, in the housing here. So I don't want it to run out on this uh, black finish. And... Uh, I'll just start by using that same 14% solution that I've, I've been using. And this time I'm just going to uh, brush a little bit on with one of those um, watercolor soft bristle paint brushes. And let it start uh, working here. Just getting it on all the dirty surfaces that I can find. Of course, starting with those gears. And uh, moving on from there. Uh, if you've seen some of my uh, wash, what I call my wash and dry videos, where I'll take the parts off the machine I want to get off, I'll do a pre-treat on the bench like this and I would usually use a lot stronger solution than 14 percent anywhere from 25 to 100 percent 
solution of the crud cutter. Um, for a lot of the vintage machines of the type that I do, the, the top worm gear area and these bottom uh, steel gear areas uh, have been the worst, like the dirtiest that I've encountered. So I'm tending to use a pretty strong uh, solution here and I'll pre-treat it on the bench, soak it like this, scrub it, and then before I take the machine into the shower. And uh, if you've never seen any of those videos, you can look on my playlist page at AndyTube and uh, look for the playlist like uh, Coco Goes to the Spa or the 56 videos in the restoration of a 404. I think in the Regina 403A model a playlist that I've done a wash and dry and also probably for Vicky the 503A Rocketeer I think I've done that among others now because of the finish on this machine I'm, I'm decided not to do it and I'm just going to try and do uh, I guess this would be kind of a spot cleaning where I'm going to try and get the cleaner on there and maybe use some nylon and metal brushes and if this 15% solution doesn't quite cut it I'll just keep increasing the strength because I feel pretty good that I can I can treat the bottom area of this machine uh, safely without damaging the finish of Lala. Seen on these type of machines seem to be very popular. Um, I like this crud cutter because it's a lot less of a volatile organic compound than a product like a kerosene and I just have a, a small condo here you know and this is like a, I'm in the corner of one of the bedrooms that's where my work area is I mean it's still 110 out today it's too hot to sit out on the patio <laughs> I don't have a garage here or a workshop or anything like that so uh, I wanted something that I could use uh, indoors without gagging you know from the fumes and stuff and that uh, wouldn't be flammable and things like that so that's how when I came across this crud cutter and tried it I said oh wow uh, one of the first machines I cleaned was a 600e for my wife who was thought she'd be interested in it and I used about two quarts of 70% alcohol and a bag of a thousand Q-tips, you know, cotton buds. <laughs> and uh, boy, I spent a lot of time with that. And she sewed on it once and she didn't like the auto reel. She didn't like that 20, little 20 yard capacity wind in place bobbin. So, that was the end of that. <laughs> so let's take a look. Now I got this kind of soak in here. I'm going to take a little toothbrush and I'm going to go back and brush into the teeth of the gears. And then uh, try and get angles on that back gear, which is really the lower gear on the vertical shaft, you know and try and get in there. That one looks, uh, these look dirtier than the top ones, which is very common. I don't know if I can get my wire brush in here, but I'm going to try it. It seems to work the best on these steel gears because I can 
brush in line with those uh, teeth kind of and try and get down in there this is this is such a little little guy Lala a little girl <laughs> It's a little bit more difficult to get in here uh, on this bigger gear here. But um, the cleaner looks like it's being pretty effective, so we'll see. I'm trying to find, here's my sock. I was going to dip this in the sock and do these uh, other uh, the shafts up here and the, the uh, hook drive shaft <clears throat> and uh, some of the body parts in here. See if I could get these clean. Let's take a look right, right here at one of these spots. These looked really hard. See that? Yeah, that's just, I don't know. Yeah, that is some tough stuff. That worried me. You know, the, the, the polished metal or finished steel, like the hook shaft, that's usually pretty easy to clean. And the feed rock and feed lifting rock shafts are usually pretty good. Uh, the aluminum usually cleans up pretty good with crud cutter. But... Uh, Now well, that's starting to work a little bit better. I think I'm going to have to go to a stronger. Uh, well, that's doing pretty good. This particular spot. This is under the motor, so I don't know if it's little uh, oil or grease mist, or because the the o the the motor gets warm, you know, and generates heat in here, and this oil kind of does a slow bake for the last 50, 60 years. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, that's it's going a little bit slower than I'd hoped for. So, anticipating this, here's what I did. I, I just poured some straight cud cutter from the gallon into this little cup and I'm just going to try it uh, full strength here and see if that's going to make any difference. Now I have not found that this crud cutter does any harm to steel or aluminum or plastic or bronze or a textilite gear on a slant needle machine. Uh, I know that on paint it will. One time on a 404 uh, without even thinking I tossed the tension unit into about a 25% solution of the crud cutter because it, it looked pretty nasty. So I thought, oh, I'll just soak that in here while I do other cleaning on the machine. And I forgot, I went back uh, hours later. I don't even remember how long, but it, it was in there a long time. And it had like peeled the paint right off of the aluminum numerated dial. 
<laughs> I, I mean, I have this silver aluminum dial with the numbers on it. <laughs> no paint. I said, wow. <laughs> and that was just my... That was just my dumb mistake, you know. To, Kind of like when I left the wicks of the Lala's motor soaking in it. Just my mistake. Now, I think that maybe you can see this stronger cud cutter is more effective. Even on this, on this uh, very hard, this is almost like... Uh, I call it varnished oil, you know, it's just layers of oil that, uh, and sometimes several layers, they get on there and they get warm and then they sit and they get dry and they get hard and, and so forth. And of course I found needles, needle bars, you know, totally varnished into the needle bar bushing before where Nothing moves on the machine and I start taking it apart only to find that the needle bar is just glued into the bushing. You know. So. I, I'm not surprised when a lighter solution of a crud cutter doesn't get off stuff like that. So I've got some of that varnish looking oil up here which didn't make a lot of sense to me because there's really not I guess there is an oil point back up there but uh, I just like to get all of the gunk I can get off of a machine uh, usually that's why I take a lot of parts off I just feel I can get it cleaner but I am working to develop a method of finding a product and maybe this uh, crud cutter where I can take a machine other than these black shellacked, you know, finished machines and I can just kind of like uh, wash and dry the whole thing without taking a bunch of parts off with taking minimal uh, parts off is what I'm hoping to find because I get emails 30 to 50 a day depending on the day of the week and people about cleaning machines and not just singers and you know do I have to take the bobbin case apart do I have to take out the take up lever and stuff like this because people don't want to or they're not comfortable um, maybe they don't want to spend the time for that you know um, they don't want to buy a $30 $40 screwdriver set and so forth so I get that but they still want to try and clean up the machine you know maybe it's dirty or it's smelly and and they like the idea of getting the machine as clean as possible um, you know and getting fresh oil on there and grease if it's the type of machine with, that takes grease so you can see this is more effective right this full strength stuff on these kind of really dirty mucky varnished up uh, parts you know uh, this isn't going to be as clean as when I take it in the shower and I thought about even taking it in the shower to wash this bottom part off but honestly I don't know how that much water would do on the finish of this where I've got some of that clear coat or shellacking or whatever it is on there has worn away and I read about micro cracks and stuff in there and and getting stuff down under that top finish and making the machine look really bad you know so I figured I better not take it in the shower um, I'll just do as much as I can here this way 
and it'll still be a big improvement, which I'm, I'm and uh, it'll be worth the time and effort here. So you can see from dipping the brush how that cleaner container has come out. You can see where I put my plastic down and it's been dripping down here. You can see how that uh, dirty that was coming out of here got. <laughs> so let's take this old bar towel I've been using and see how much of this I can just kind of wipe off now. These um, shafts that I'm wiping right there, they can tend to get a little flash rust. They're not polished smooth like this hook drive shaft. And I've noticed that they can get a little rust easier than some of the other steel parts. And uh, a lot of times though, as soon as I put uh, oil on there, that kind of dissolves the rust. So if I just have a, a few specks of a flash rust here and there, I'll just oil right over it and it goes away. But if it's, if you can readily see flash rust popping up like that, then I use that must for rust. And if you wash a machine like this, and usually I wash it in the shower, then rinse it to, to get out all of this stuff, then you, you need to dry it right away and then oil it brush oil like I'm going to show you here and I did in the other parts because if you if you wash the machine and don't blow it dry or wash it and dry it and don't oil it you're definitely going to see some flash rust <laughs> I can almost guarantee that you know which which I learned one time washed dried and and my neighbor came over yelling because her water heater kind of blew open and was flooding her condo and she didn't know how to shut off her water and oh poor poor widow lady you know it was just a big a big mess so I totally forgot the machine for hours and came back and I had a lot of rust on it here can you see all this gunky oil and dried up stuff there so I'm going to take the wire brush to that and we'll see how that comes off. Comes off pretty quickly, the build up. hard to get in here around the, the parts that came out pretty good let's see back in here I might get one of my uh, softer bristle nylon brushes that'll kind of sneak sneak in here a little bit. Maybe get some of these parts that I can't can't quite get in there. A little bit smaller one now. Now what's what's interesting is that when when I take the machine in the shower, I do rinse it with water, get all the cleaner off and all the muck that's still on there. But when you read the directions on this crud cutter cleaner, I think I mentioned this before. You know, you you mix up the solution strength you want, and you and you clean a counter or a stove top or something, and then it says just take a clean cloth 
and uh, wipe it dry. You know, it doesn't say anything about rinsing it. Uh, You know, wiping it with a wet cloth or rinsing it with water. Some cleaners do. This one does not. Let's see if we can get down in here. That's funny where I where I scrub this motor area before then when it dried already it got it, the, the, the oil or gunk or whatever that is dried again and stained the aluminum <laughs> man that's some tenacious tenacious stuff isn't it so maybe on stuff like that I don't know maybe um, kerosene would be quicker you know I just don't uh, I'm not don't like using it and stuff but if you're familiar with that and I know I know that people uh, clean some of these old machines with um, kerosene and I've seen uh, pictures of them you know and they're, they're some very good looking work when they when they get finished with it it's cleaned up well so let's see now if I can get in here and get this wiped out. So uh, at this point, I don't I don't feel I'm getting it as clean as I normally would with the other method I use, but I feel I've taken a lot of the. Uh, gunk and, and, and dried up oil and grease and dirt and, and stuff like that. I feel like I've taken a lot of that out of this area. So I'm pleased about that and this this motor area got a lot cleaner you know compared to how it was. Mm -hmm. Just got to get a little bit back in. I think I'm going to have to use the old Q-tip method <laughs> to get back into some of these tighter spots here. Mm -hmm. Where I can't, can't quite get my... I, from brushing the cleaner on and then using the toothbrush or my steel brush you know I got a lot of dirty liquid settled down in here and I want to get it want to get it out of here see that <laughs> it's very hard for me not to grab this and head to the shower right now <laughs> uh huh and I guess if I was ever going to try it on a featherweight, a fifty-dollar featherweight would be the would be the one to use, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. Okay. I guess I'm just going to have to. Uh, what's that old? Stone song, you can't always get what you want. But if you try sometimes, you just might find you get what you need. Something like that. Well, I'm not seeing any flash rust popping up. So I think while I'm down here, uh, I hadn't, I hadn't planned on this so much, but I think I'm going to take these old uh, bed feet out of here, bed cushions they're called, 
Some people call them rubber feet. I think Singer actually called them bed cushions. These are pretty, pretty bad little screws here. I don't know if that's crud or rust, so I'm going to just put them in the 100% solution there. Let's see if this is going to... Yeah. You know, part of using a portable machine is having good bed feet on here so that when you um, put this on a on a table or a workbench or countertop or whatever that that you have this cushioning and that cuts down on a lot of the vibration while you're sewing man these things are these things are really in here. Now you can buy these uh, online from a few places. I think I have some. I'll look in my... I got a shoe box with all this kind of stuff in it. I think I have some for uh, a featherweight. I think the featherweight and the 301A take the same bed feet. And I'll... I'll... Uh, Man, I'm going to have to dig those all out. Let me just try another one. That's going to take... These are so old. This one now is softer. I notice on, on this and on the slant needle machines that the one nearest the motor is always the driest. <laughs> it just seems like it's always the flattest and the... Oops. And the, oops, and the driest and hardest to get out. So, so you can't can't tell yet if that's rust or not. So let's let's try this one. This feels a little bit softer. So I just wanted you to get a look at it. There. See, there's a little depressed area there, like a little dished out area, and this is what the bed cushion looks like. Now, it usually doesn't mushroom out like this. That's just from wear. But uh, when, when you get the right size, they're very easy then to put in there and put the screw back in. And then you have nice, soft, rubber uh, bed cushions so you don't get that uh, vibrating. And uh, I, I've had people where, like... Uh, one corner is worn so low, I don't know if it's from how they used the machine or how they stored it or something, but it's like the sewing bed wasn't even level anymore because one back corner cushion was worn. And the way she found out was she drug her machine across the work surface and, and the screw made a big gouge in it. <laughs> and... Uh, See if I can just get this one there. That one's not too bad either. Okay, but now see uh, this other one in the other back corner looks flat and hard like the one by the motor. And I'm, I'm going to have to kind of dig that out with a knife blade or something. And these screws can be hard to get out. So sometimes I'll just turn the machine upside down and drip a few drops of WD-40 in, in on top of these screws and just let them sit there. Like maybe I'll do that at night and then the next morning I'll, I can take the screw out. Let's see, I don't think this one is going to come out as, as easy, but we'll see. Yeah, see, it's it's a lot stiffer, and it's, it starts to crumble when I pry on it. This little can opener on my 
Swiss Army knife type knife is my favorite tool for digging these things out. <laughs> yeah, see that's breaking. Let's see if I can get it from the inside sometimes. See how that's see how that's all crumbling up. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's going to take a lot of work. So, I thought I could just show you that real quick and pop some new ones in there. But I think I'll finish that up later because I want to get some oil on here. And then oil the bushings and stuff. I still see a little moisture in there. So... Uh, as I did in some of the other videos, I'm just going to get my hair dryer and blow it real quick, okay? And then I'll come back and we'll get some grease and oil on there and I'll oil all the main bushings again. So, I'll dry now. I'm going to start as I usually do on a machine with gears and I'm going to put some of this uh, dry flow clear synthetic grease with PTFE and I'm going to put it on the gears before I do any oiling. Okay. Just a light coat. I might oil and grease a machine uh, you know like three or four times before I'm totally done but this is to get some protective coating on the gears so I don't get rust down in there okay good and then uh, oops I don't know what I oh here's the lid then I'm going to uh, brush grease onto uh, the shafts and so forth clean my brush there and get my little oil cup okay this is not the cleaner I was using before because that that's all dirty this is the oil so I'm just going to brush on here and get a nice little coating of oil. Now I don't know it may not show in the camera but I had a couple of spots in here here and here where there was just little tiny like if you know what gold flake is in a paint I saw just a couple of flecks here and there of a flash rust and I'm I'm not going to use a rust remover because I know putting this oil on it as I just did that rust will go away it won't it won't be a problem mm -hmm. and I don't need to uh, brush this whole body because it's aluminum I am going to brush the steel screw that holds the thumb nut for the bed cover and the oil pan okay and I'll just go in here and put a little bit on this shaft like so okay that's good and Ooh, things even like this now things are turning so much smoother now I'm going to go in and put some oil on the places where the the uh, what do you call it instruction manual says to oil because I very easily could have got uh, the, the, the degreaser in there you know and uh, Uh, removed any lubrication in there so I just go in with a 
couple of drops just like I normally would to the places that I want to get some oil on. It's a straight stitch machine so it's one of the easier machines to oil. Okay. And then I'll just I don't have my uh, feed regulator in there, so I'll have to manipulate this one by hand. Because there's nothing to do that since I have the feed regulator out. The feed lifter shaft is okay. So I think, is that everything? I. I'm seeing a little hole up here and I'm wondering if that is a way I'm supposed to put oil in the bushing. And to be honest, I haven't looked in the instruction manual about the oiling. And I don't know what that hole would be for. Maybe it's a small set screw to hold the bushing in place. I don't know. I'm going to put a drop of oil in there just to be on the safe side. Uh -huh. And I'm going to put one right at the base of the gear. Ooh, without getting any... See, there's another hole on this bushing. It's only a drop of oil in each place, so not worried about that. Okay, let's get, let's come on up here. And you saw me in the earlier part of the video, the one, two, three but I need to put oil in this uh, nose and bushing of the uh, horizontal upper arm shaft. Get some oil back in there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then Let's see, on a slant, sometimes one of these holes is for a bushing, but this doesn't have uh, a same type of bushing as a slant, so no oil goes in there. I think that's just for the seam guide and other attachments. How about this upper vertical arm? There it is right there. Oh, here's a lower one here too, I think. So those two are to lower the upper and lower bushing on that vertical arm shaft. See, that's funny. On the slant needles, later they put those right in the front. On this, that's nice. Actually, kind of they put them in the back because it gives a very nice appearance here. But let's get that. Oh, boy. How sweet is this getting, huh? Okay. Well, I think I'm done with my internal cleaning and oiling. And my battery's almost dead. And my video's getting long, but I think what I'm going to do is spend some time digging out these dumb bed cushions and if I have some new ones I'm going to show you how to put them in real quick here and I've got my screws soaking in here I'm almost hoping that uh, that they're rusty so I could show you that must for rust and I think see that I think they I think they might have a little rust on them because they're soaking in there all this time. They didn't get that much cleaner. I'll check it out. Then we'll come back and uh, either way, and I'll either 
put these on or tell you I'm not going to. <laughs> so those screws that I took out, they were dirty, but they were rusty also. So here's what they look like after soaking them in the crud cutter cleaner. So you, that's when you could tell they were very rusty. And then I soaked them in uh, the must for rust, rust remover. Uh, well, I went and had a meal, soaked them in that. And then came back and here's what they look like uh, after that. So, that's, that's why I like that uh, product. <laughs> So I already put three of the new uh, bed cushion or bed feet. Uh, this was the best of the old one, the hard. And uh, these are the new ones that you can buy. And uh, now this is a little bit lower. And I have some that were a little bit taller. But I decided to go with with the uh, lower one more like on the uh, 301 than the taller ones and uh, of course they're they're firm but they're supple the tall ones are kind of like the same ones you'd put on a slant needle machine and they're a little bit uh, 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 bouncy because this machine isn't as heavy this is only what 11 pounds this machine so I just put a little oil in there uh, in the hole that I'm going to put that in so in however many years if these feet get hard or wear out I can replace them again and uh, I'm sure places like the featherweight shop and uh, sellers on eBay will will have these uh, feet and I did just scratch out the old ones kind of chiseled them out with my little a uh, can opener tool <laughs> on my Swiss Army knife and I get them in there and and you turn them in all the way uh, until they stop so now the advantage of that over what was on there before was they there are a little bit more cushioning it'll also keep the machine from sliding around because these were, were all hard and uh, it'll be level again too you know <clears throat> so there we go cleaned up the uh, inside there oiled everything up and uh, Greased up the gears just for the first time and oiled all the ports. I guess you saw on the slide that is an oil port for these hook drive shaft bearings. A little hole up there was an oil port. There we go. Thanks for watching this one. Hope you'll come back and uh, visit me again when you have time or if you care to. Alright, meantime, take care of yourself. Please.